disgusting. No, Josh, don't leave me. You make me sick. Silent Whisper is a new fragrance by perfume. Because sometimes flatulence happens. <laughs> Not Super Mario or Shovel Knight, Super Chibi Knight is a wacky and colourful action RPG with enemies that look suspiciously like evil mutant angry birds. The only thing cuter than the game is that it was a collaboration between a dev and his 8 year old daughter. A sequel to 10 million that takes the core experience and makes it more complete. Graphics, animation and music all get a boost and it feels more like an adventure than a game per se. Gathers a crew of the most top down view and a talented crew. A variety of tactical approaches and a whole lot of bank heists for you and your poachers. Mastermind this and you've got the master plan. Surprisingly, it's also got a bit of punch in its narrative. Airbrawl is a dogfighter, but a really fast one that makes chasing down enemies a thrill. Tight controls also make for some stunning passes through narrow spaces. We can't wait for this one to get out of early access. A 2D pixel fest that could have been made in 1984, Duck Game takes classic action and platformer conventions and throws them into a multiplayer brawler a la Smash Bros. What ensues is absolute madness, which turns out to be more than amusing. In the end, the only thing I saw was a flash. An insufferable burning light. The pain ripping apart my body. I felt it tearing out of my soul. Colite is a horror game that has had a lot made about how it doesn't rely on cheap thrills, such as jump scares. But since it's still a scary game, how exactly does it frighten players? Well, it tries to build up tension. Thanks to some top-notch graphics, the Russian iciness looks beautiful, especially when lit up at night. It's also lonely and very atmospheric. This mix with some impeccable narration and gripping story would let the game develop an underlying sense of uneasiness. Instead, the story is often cheesy and silly, and falls short of its promise. It's also a shame because it just zaps any intrigue of the game's mystery. With gameplay consisting of pseudo-exploration a la Dear Esther, the game is ultimately left a little bare. Colite is still a valiant and pretty effort, but could have been transfixing with a better story. Tonight you die. Well, hopefully you don't die, but it is the name of this game. It's a very short game, and you don't really do much. You try and figure out what's going on and simply react. At the start you're told, tonight you die, and after that you walk forward under the light of the street lamps. But you never get any further. The city is filled with the same scene with the same lonely lamp. There's a crackling ambience, but it soon grows into a howl. You can hear the malice within it. The drones and howls grow louder, and their beats quicken. You remember you are going to die tonight. You're in danger. You look around and see nothing. It must be behind you. But it's surrounded by the crackles and howls. It's closing in. Your feet hitting the concrete. The sound it makes. It is the last of your life. Because tonight, you die. It's almost unreal to think that Homesick was made by just one person, for there is so much detail in the game. In every one of the ashen environments, every aspect of every chair, tile and wall has been given generous attention and whittled out precisely. The story told subtly through exploration functions because of many carefully placed notes and pictures. 
It is a remarkable feat accomplished by Barrett Meeker, but perhaps the level of detail is the result of having one focused and united mind work on the game. Meeker has stated that Dear Esther was an inspiration, not to mention Homesick also reminds of similar titles such as Gone Home and Ethan Carter. In comparison to Esther, there is more engagement with puzzles and a clearer story. Another nice touch is how you play out your dreams in a surreal version of the house with an axe in hand. Ultimately, like the earlier comparisons, Homesick works because it has the potential to create an emotional reaction in its players. And it is that potential that further proves that it and games as a whole can tell profound stories. This is the third day running you've called me in. As video games are increasingly recognised as a cultural force, they are being mixed with and influenced by other cultural mediums. With games like Beyond Two Souls, or even the aforementioned Dear Esther, we've seen games focus more on story, and the lines between film and game blurred. For some, these hybrids have been viewed as an affront to games, but ignoring any positions, we feel her story is one of the best examples of using film devices in a game. The game takes place on an investigator's desktop. On it is a series of video recordings of police interviews with a woman after her husband went missing. By searching keywords into the database, videos can be located and watched, and they are all the player has to piece together the mystery. This means that the narrative is always subject to the player's choices. It is the player that determines the order the videos are watched in, and the player who pieces the story together in their mind. In this way, her story lets the player be responsible as the factor that decides how things play out, and it is by sticking to this principle that we feel her story is able to successfully borrow elements like video footage from films. We're probably halfed on too long, but before we go, we should also give a shout out to the main actor, Viva Seyfart, who does a brilliant job bringing the pieces of the narrative to life. You've probably never heard of it, but our number one game for the month is Dolly. We can't wait to tell you what it's about, but you're going to have to wait until next week when we feature it on our Game of the Month video. Another month finished and a whole lot of glorious games uncovered. We hope you enjoy. Thanks for watching. My name's Lawrence. And my name's Josh. We'll see you next time here on IndieFormer. That's disgusting. No, Josh. Don't leave me, please. Make me sick. That's disgusting. That's disgusting. That's disgusting. That's disgusting.